Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I want to show you a few examples of different time stretching techniques that can help with creating new musical ideas, particularly with using the flex time speed algorithm and the flex time tempophone algorithm. So most people who have worked with flex time and logic before are very familiar with uh, monophonic slicing rhythmic and polyphonic for time correction. But these last two, speed and tempophone, can be used for special effects, whereas the others don't affect the pitch or the frequency of the sound that you're time stretching or compressing. Speed and tempophone do. So let's start with speed, because it's probably the easiest uh, to understand. Tempophone's a little more complex, but speed essentially is a tape playback speed effect. It's not even really a tape playback speed effect, it's just a playback speed effect. With digital audio, nowadays we have the ability to stretch and compress things without affecting the pitch, but back in the early days of tape manipulation and playing around with uh, tape speed effects, you could uh, speed up the playback of a tape machine and the pitch would go up, and you could slow down the playback speed of a tape machine and the pitch would go down. If you want an example of this, go check out uh, Les Paul and Mary Ford singing uh, Sitting on Top of the World. This is a perfect example where you'll hear multiple spots where Les Paul's guitar has been pitch shifted up to sound faster and uh, the, you can hear it. There's some some artifacting, um, not d digital artifacting, but just some tape artifacting going on where you can hear that the pitch has gone higher up. So let me just give you a quick example of something you could use speed for. Um, I'm just here in the uh, loop browser. I just searched up synth. Here's a loop. Uh, it's an audio loop. By the way, you have to use this with audio. So if you use this with uh, MIDI, you'll have to convert the MIDI to audio first. So this is a really basic audio synth lead. Again, if you're working with MIDI, you'll have to convert it to audio. So which one quick way to do that is create an audio track first and then drag the MIDI data onto the audio track and it'll automatically convert it to um, uh, audio for you. Okay, so I've got this uh, classic 80s synth lead with drums it sounds like this nothing too special but let's say i want like a counter motive to it something that's in between the gaps rhythmically so what i'm going to do is just duplicate this track hold option and drag this down to duplicate it and then what I'm gonna do is turn on flex time on the duplicated track. And I'm gonna set this to speed effects. So now what's gonna happen is if I speed up the track in one direction but slow it down in another direction, this side's gonna play faster, this side's gonna play uh, slower. It's also gonna, the pitch is gonna go up here and the pitch is gonna go down here. So you can play around with this, you know, with individual samples and things like that to try to uh, play with the, the, the pitch of the sample. But with a full loop like this, typically what I'll do is just hover over the upper right side of the region and I will drag it in to be half the length or maybe double length. So if I drag this in and it's half length, it's gonna play one octave higher. And likewise, if I drag this out to be twice the original length, it's going to play one octave lower. So it's the same concept with tape speed or like record player speed. If you double the speed, the, the frequency and the wavelength of the waves uh, is cut in half and therefore the pitch is one octave higher. So I'm going to stick with this. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna duplicate this by hitting a uh, repeat it by pressing Command R, and then I'm gonna join these two together just by pressing J. What that'll, that'll do is render a new uh, audio file. So now that speed effects has been printed into this new audio file, what I'm gonna do now is go back to, uh, go up to polyphonic, and I need to turn flex, if you notice there's no flex markers on it, if you'd see there's no flex markers, go up to your region inspector here and then make sure flex and follow is on. 
And now what I'm going to do is play around with the timing of it a bit. I could go through and manually make some adjustments, but let me try quantizing this to an eighth note. And let's see what that does. Let's see if that fits uh, with the other loop. Cool, it's like I have this, this extra sort of polyrhythmic idea, not really polyrhythmic, but just a more complex rhythmic idea that's sort of filling in the gaps from the original. Let me try quantizing this to a 16th note instead. Yeah, now we're really getting somewhere. Uh, let me just hit Command R on both of these to re uh, repeat it out. Let me go ahead and on my new upper idea, let me filter this out. I'll add uh, the channel EQ in here. So we have this cool like a counterpoint to the original loop, but it still develops on the original notes of the original loop, just with a different rhythm, but an and up, up an octave with a different mix setting, some reverb and some delay to sort of distinguish it from the original. Okay, so next up is the Tempophone flex time algorithm. Uh, admittedly, right up front, I'll just admit that I'm not that great at creating um, effects with Tempophone, but I'll show you what it does. I'll try to create a quick example and then I'll leave you to your own devices to play around with it on your own. Now, Tempophone isn't just a made up word. Uh, this uh, algorithm emulates the uh, effect of a time-based, time-stretching device that was known as a Tempophone. And this results in sort of metallic mechanical sounds with a lot of artifacts. Um, per, and it's kind of similar to like some of the sounds you'd get from granular synthesis. So it's nice for special effects, but trying to use it musically is a little bit difficult. Um, so I'll show you right here. I've just got a, a pre-made uh, drummer pattern and then just a baseline loop from the loop library. All right, cool. I really just want to get that bump, 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 bump part out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my snap mode to division and I'm going to grab my scissors tool. And one of the things you can do in Logic is when you cut something on a division, you can actually hold option while you do it and it'll cut all of the slices to that same length. So I just want the front end of each one of these clips. So I'm gonna trim these in by half length. And I don't really need a whole lot of these. I just want like maybe four of them here. So what I'll do is I'll add a quick fade out to all of these so that it's not so jarring. Okay, cool. So now what I'm gonna do is turn on Tempophone. Uh, by the way, you can hit Command F to hide and show flex. It's a quick way to pull that up. Turn on flex on that track, go down to Tempophone, and let's see what that sounds like just as is. So you're already hearing a difference. So let's say I pull this one, I stretch this one out. Let's see what that sounds like. I wanna go shorter. So it gives these sort of mechanical artifacts Now there are some other controls down here in the track inspector. There's grain size and crossfade. The grain size sets the size of the grains that are played or repeated in their original speed and crossfaded to create the time compression or expansion. Um, so when I pull this shorter, if I pull it longer, It 
it directly affects the pitch. Um, the thing that's tricky about this is this is not a region by region thing. This is a, a track setting. So you kind of have to just uh, live with it. Another thing that I like to play around with in addition to Tempophone, another nice way to sort of uh, play around with some different sound effects is to use Logic's built-in um, speed up or slow down fade. So if I add a fade to the front end of this um, and then right click, you can choose speed up and you'll get a time speed up, like a turn, almost like a turntable speed up effect. Let me try it on this first one here. If I do it on the back end, just right click and now it becomes slow down. It's like a turntable effect almost. Um, I like to use that in conjunction with this to create some cool uh, glitchy effects. One tricky thing about this though is when you're in the Tempophone uh, mode here and you right click on it, it doesn't show you that speed up and slow down. So just hit Command F, hide flex, then right click, add the slow down, and then go back into flex by pressing Command F. So I've gone through and played around the different uh, fades and arranged a little something here. Another thing I like to play around with here, in addition to uh, the fade-ins and fade-outs, the speed-ups, the slow-downs, and Tempophone, is playing around with the pitch of individual audio regions. You can do this by selecting a region, going over to the Region Inspector, and adjusting the Transpose option here. So let's say I want this one to be up 12 semitones. I want these two little ones to be up, you click here, 36 semitones, that's three octaves. And then this last one, I'll make it 24 semitones, which is up two octaves. Obviously, it creates some, uh, some interesting uh, pitched effects that I'd probably have to play around with a bit more to get it to sound uh, like anything decent. But let me try putting a speed up and a slow down on that. So there's all sorts of uh, cool effects you could create with this, but like I said, admittedly, I'm not that great at it, but you know, I just wanted to show you, leave you to your own devices to come up with some cool creative sound effects with this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys next time.